Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Matt with Green Bar Trading. Welcome back to another weekly watch list video where we're gonna go over everything you need to know for the week ahead. Before we get into it, hit that thumbs up for the video. And if you are new, consider subscribing to the channel. So up on your screen here are your earnings for the week. Now, earnings season is starting to dwindle down. Um, all the main important stocks that move the market have already had their earnings. All right. So if you are interested in trading earnings, like I say all the time, be aware that you are paying a premium. All right. To trade those options that is far higher than any other time during the year. So if you're trading, let's say, uh, Disney on Wednesday, your options premiums are going to be elevated. So if you don't get that move in your favor and a big move in your favor, the next day you're going to notice that that IV crush hits you, all right? Um, and it's going to take all your premium away. So keep that in mind, all right? So once again, there's your earnings for the week. Okay, going over to our sectors and how they performed on the week relative to each other. You can see here the one week relative performance, not much movement. And on Friday, we saw a huge amount of movement. So we started the week trading down, we ended the week trading up, and that's where we are right now. On the one day relative performance, you could see on Friday, really outsized gains for every sector. The one week, well, it was kind of muted with energy down 4% for the week, even though it rallied 3% on Friday. So a very up and down week. And the VIX definitely showed that. All right, so that's your sectors there on the week. Looking at the economic calendar and you know what we're seeing here for this coming week, the CPI on Wednesday, that's gonna be a market mover. The Fed wants to see that CPI, um, you know, coming on down, big inflation gauge. And on Thursday is the producer price index, which is an inflation gauge for the producers of goods and services. All right. So this is going to be a big day on Wednesday and on Thursday. This will move the markets. So um, it's something that we should all be aware of. Last week, we saw the Fed move interest rates 25 basis points. You had Powell speaking at 2.30, saying that they are not going to be cutting rates this year. Now, just because he says that doesn't mean necessarily that will happen. If something you know really bad happens with the economy, or if the CPI numbers, the PCE numbers, those inflation numbers, if they happen to come in, you know, really, really great. Um, but the market and the economy is, you know, really suffering. Maybe they will have to pivot. But right now, they raised it 25 basis points. They're keeping it there. They said that inflation is going to take a very long time to come down to their level that they want. So it just means that they're most likely just going to have to keep interest rates here and see what happens with the overall economy. But right now. What we saw on Friday, the jobs number was really good. Now, they did revise for the previous two months. They revised those down. So this is a big beat. But in reality, it's really not because of the two months that they revised down. So there is some weakening in the jobs, um, you know, the hiring numbers. What is not weak is the unemployment rate, which was 3.4%. They were expecting 3.6%. 3.4% is just incredible. Um, you know, with that tight of a labor market and that low unemployment, it's tough to see a recession coming, um, you know, in the, in the immediate future, you know, maybe being pushed out a while. Um, the U.S. hourly wages was actually up also on the month. The Fed looks at this really closely. They don't want to see that because that's just suggesting that it will add to the inflation problem. So if you have to pay 
employees more, right? If employers are paying their help more, they're going to have to pass that on to customers, which makes the inflation higher, right? You're paying more for goods. You're paying more for service. You guys probably have noticed how expensive everything is, all right? So we need to see this come on down, and that's what they're definitely looking at. Now, looking at the bond yields, this is something that I'm constantly looking at because it's pretty incredible. The short end of the treasury bonds are yielding so much more than the longer term uh, treasury bonds. That's screaming inflation. Now, a one month is yielding 5.48%. So in one month, you could get a guaranteed return of 5.48%, which is pretty good, um, especially with the equity market being so extended right now. I don't, I don't think I see more than 5% you know, gaining in the next month with the S&P 500, the Qs, um, and even then you would need your stocks to go up even more than that. That's incredible. This is probably because of the debt ceiling and the thoughts that if they don't get something done, then you have that default um, risk always there. And that's probably why the yield is so high on that one month, two months, three months, um, as people are just selling them. They're just getting out of these. All right, so that's the bond yields. Okay, before I get into the SPY, our compass, and go into the charts, I want to show you guys what we post in Discord and last week's weekly watch list video, the stocks that we had on watch, and how they responded. These were really good call outs that we had. I had Uber has earnings Tuesday. I really like the way the chart is setting up for a move higher. Nice support by the 200 moving average. That 200 moving average is that orange line there, and you can see the volume that came in and a very nice bounce before earnings. And then Uber after earnings. Look at that move. Now, that was a very good call. So if traders took advantage of that you know, call out, they would be up a lot right now. So that was really nice to see. A lot of volume came in very good earnings report, but right now the RSI is overbought, all right? So that was a great move we saw there. Meta, very similar situation. We had this call last week. After the three-day rule, not touching a reversal on a stock up or down by 10% or more, in the gap up, I will be looking to fade Meta. So Meta after that started to fade. You can see the three-day rule, and then it starts to roll over a little bit. As the RSI was so overbought, you know, and something gapping up so much, it just makes sense to pull on back a little bit. We saw the same thing in the last earnings. It pulled on back to that 20 EMA and then kept bouncing higher. So that would be a target that I would have on Meta. All right, so going over to our compass. The SPY, this is where we're at right now. Now, once again, if you're new to the videos, I just want to show you guys what indicators I have on my daily chart. So every one of those candles is one day of trading. And the candlesticks can show and paint a picture for you guys on where the market might go. Now, I look at that. I look at the volume. And I also look at the 200 moving average, which is this orange line. I got the 50, which is this cream colored line, and then the 20 EMA for momentum. All right, that's the daily chart right there. Now, if you're looking at candlesticks, something we pointed out right here, um, this was on Monday, I believe. It came right into this overhead supply and then set up a very bearish candle. Now that candle, that's called a gravestone doji. And you can see what happened after that gravestone doji. We sold off for three days, but we found support. This weekly support we have around 404 definitely held up nice. We look at this on the weekly chart. 
you can see what I'm talking about with that weekly support there. Now, these are two, you know, sort of bullish candles, I would call them. The week before was a bullish hammer. This is a nice setup too, but you open the week here and you close the week slightly in the red. But you saw with these bottoming wicks here that there was a lot of buying down here. So at that 404 support, until 404 breaks, I have to think that the market is either going to consolidate in this range that we've been in or break out to the upside. All right. You can see here. I mean, we're still in a range. You saw a lot of movement, but we're still in a range. We've done that in the past. All right. The spy does that. It looks like it might break out, pulls back, looks like it might break down and then has this nice pop on Friday. But like I said, the volume was less than these red days, so I'm not impressed with that move just yet. On to the Qs, same thing. So we're in this kind of consolidation here. We see some nice demand down here, and now we're getting that breakout, but we've seen this happen before. So if we just zoom in, you can see right here, that's basically just right back to the beginning of the week. So not much has changed here, but we are outside this box. We did close at the highest price on the entire year for the QQQ at this 322.89. Now, Apple definitely helped propel that. Microsoft definitely helped propel that. Um, and that's why we saw the Qs just outperform um, a lot. So that is at the highs for the year, the highest it's been since last August. All right, so that's the QQQ. Looking at the Dow Jones, we're right back into this, um, you know, whatever you want to call this. This looks like an inverse head and shoulders type, but there's no real upside to this. I don't see much upside. Once you get back into this consolidation, that's probably where we're going to go unless we pull on back. Now, the RSI, if we look at that, it's making lower lows and lower highs. So the lower low, this could be a lower high setting up, another lower low, and you're talking about, you know, maybe coming down to this 200 moving average. All right, so that's the Dow. I don't see so much upside in that. And the Dow did get a nice move by Apple. So, you know, even with that move, you're still right there into consolidation. Um, on the IWM, you kind of are in this, you know, bit of a downtrend here, but you're looking like you want to break out. You know, it's had nice support down here at the 170, 171. If this does break, then you're looking at this nice, you know, bearish to a bullish reversal. Hasn't happened yet. Um, these regional banks, they had a nice little bounce on Friday, but there could still be some issues there. So that's the IWM. Now, let's just take a look at the VIX. Before I get into any stocks, look what the VIX did last week. From its lowest point to the highest point, and then closes back down here at support. Just crazy move in the VIX. From 15s to 21, back to 17. Like I said, it was a volatile week of trading. You saw some downside and then you saw some upside basically closing, you know, at that flat line. All right. So that's the VIX up and down all over the place. Apple, if we want to take a look at this, I mean, this is getting obviously to that overbought level. We'll be looking for a pullback on this. Big gap up off earnings, um, a lot of volume. We see this kind of stuff with earnings. And then it starts to consolidate and then eventually pull back. We can see, I mean, it's done this the whole time. Nice support with the momentum indicator here on the daily chart. But that's what I'm expecting. So I'm going to wait a little bit, but I'm expecting some consolidation, maybe a pullback here with Apple. All right, looking at AMD. This is a nice setup here since um, I would say October. Just making a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows higher highs, so far a higher low, maybe a higher high. 
or at least coming back to this 100. So I like AMD. If it can hold up over this 50 moving average, this can definitely get some legs here um, and rally up. So AMD on the long side, if it can hold over the 50, is definitely something I'm going to be looking at. Um, on to Tesla. Tesla, we kind of broke out. So we saw some support here. We have that inverse head and shoulders, and now we have a gap to fill up to 178. You have the 50 moving average at 182. So Tesla, I think, is starting to gain some, you know, trading, right? Some more volume, some more day trading. It looks like it wants to, you know, curl back up. Now you're still in a downtrend, right, for the year. So if we look at this, you kind of have a downtrend. You're kind of in this channel here. The top of the channel is going to be just about at that 50 moving average. So I think that we can see some upside here to Tesla. I would be playing this on the long side. Looking at Microsoft, I mean, this chart is really, really impressive. Consolidated, it's been pretty textbook. Consolidation, a nice breakout. Now, the only thing is, if we look at this, right? So just keep in mind this move, break up into this, consolidate, and another breakout. It's kind of very similar to NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA back here to start the week. You had that consolidation, and then you had a nice breakout, but no follow through. And you actually pulled all the way back, and then on Friday, in one day, ripped back up. So that's something interesting to keep in mind. Just because it breaks out that first day doesn't mean that it can't pull back and then try another breakout. Sometimes it does that. It's a little tricky. Get some traders, um, you know, looking at that first breakout as a day trade and then it gets sold off. So just keep that in mind with Microsoft as, you know, once again, I'm showing you guys these because the RSIs, they're all overbought. They're all overbought, which would suggest a pullback, all right? Microsoft's overbought. Um, you have Uber right now that's overbought. Apple that's overbought. Uh, NVIDIA that's overbought. So just keep that in mind, all right? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the thumbs up for me, and I'll see you back on the next one. Take care, guys.